Hello fellow pop questers, welcome to the Valentine's Day special with Nightfall Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger herself. And well, let's get right on to it. So we'll do a quick little su summary. Basically, Amy Sophie's sister has been taken to the Lost Cities because, well, her basically Sophie's parents have been taken. Meanwhile, Lady Gisela, the bad guy that's now the kind of good guy, Keith's mom, is advising them about how Keith's blood opens the door to Nightfall, whatever Nightfall is, wink wink. And basically, we find out about a couple things. Number one, Mr. Forkel isn't dead, except he has an identical twin brother that they share a mind with, and they're the, pretty much the same person. Therefore, we do have Mr. Forkel back, which is really, really good, because he's really helpful. And meanwhile, this is the Valentine's special part. Dex is rejected by Sophie. And I think we kind of expected that because Sophie's kind of head over heels for Fitz. And she rejects Dex with a freaking kiss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hope our rejections are as smooth as that. Like, what the a kid? Huh? Uh, what, what kind of idiot kisses a, the guy that, like, confesses? Please explain this to me. I don't understand it. Anyways, moving on. Basically, Marilla is also a pyrokinetic, which is really good. And we're trying to basically find Nightfall. And Nightfall is this interesting place, and we're not sure what it is until we go through a lot of papers and stuff. Typical Keeper of the Lost Cities fashion, and we find out it is a place for human experimentation and we realized that the great divide or you know elves banishing the humans away from the lost cities was actually the fault of the elves because well humans were being like taken by this name this girl named Vespera and experiment experimented upon which is insane and which is obviously the elves responsibility and it's probably one of those secrets that's in those caches I don't know how to say that still and so they they go through everything and they manage they realize there's two nightfalls lady giselle is one that she built and another nightfall that was the original by vespero that we mentioned that's in atlantis because that was the only city that the elves and the humans shared and basically they go down there they manage to find where v vespero's old lab is and they go in and they are met with number one so she's parent sophie's parents hanging from the wall and number two 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 of these great monster hybrid things that could probably kill them and we got the entire gang together though. We got Lynn, we got Tam, we got Bianna, we got Fitz, we got uh, we got Keith, we got Sophie obviously. We also have we also have Grady here, the mesmerizer. And so we're like all here, and it's really really cool. And, and Marilla is here as well. I forgot. And together we go against the Never Seen again, and. <laughs> However, the never we do accomplish some sort of victory due to the fact that the never seen attack and they fight, and Lady Gisela forces Vesper to side get on her side, and now Lady Gisela is the main baddie woman again. And basically, what happens is the Pisanio pass that I have Roy basically just cuts a hole open in Atlantis, and Lynn conquers her fear and lets Sophie and Hansel to keep that water from falling on Atlantis and flooding the entire city before the Pisanio paths can come to patch up the little hole and that's pretty much the end of this book and basically at the end we find alvar all broken up in this abandoned base and alvar wakes up and goes hey who the frick is alvar apparently he lost his memories and that is the end of the first part and the second part analysis whoa so i think there's a lot of historical nuances within the book itself especially with the kind of like the american pilgrims and the native americans basically just because like um, there's a lot of like history with between the Native Americans and the Americans where the where it's it's weirdly like Almost like the Americans kind of took over and the Native Americans kind of a lot of them died out Although some are remaining here and that history was kind of almost covered up before the Native Americans had wars and tried to bring it back and I believe it's like this really bad black part of the US that we that, uh, that we sometimes don't really like really look into it and that kind of black part, I believe, is also for the elves, because the elves are supposed to be these picture-perfect people who literally can die from feeling guilt, therefore is not 
capable of doing anything bad. Oh, Fenton killed a lot of people, so did Brent, and they're never seen in killing people. Yeah, it's great. You gotta be kidding me. And it's it's very it's not it's not a very good situation. And and we find out that the elves have this kind of dark history with these bad guys and and uh, and very evil people and human experimentation and we kind of find out that it isn't as picturistic and as perfect as it can to suggest like for example the american dream is very picturistic and very nice and very perfect however when the reality is not so and we believe i believe there's some sort of historical nuances that you can kind of catch and connect with the keeper of the lost city series and just the general history of the u.s and america why am i talking about this because I had a history session in my social studies class that reminded me of this while we were talking about the Americas. And another thing is, this is a big sense of character development for Lin Song, and she is the hydrokinetic who held up Atlantis. And I think this is kind of a big, like, arc comeback due to the fact that Lin kind of got banished from the Keeper from the Lost Cities and went to Exilium just because, mostly because, she flooded Atlantis, and obviously that was a terrible decision from her parents because they basically made her live next to the ocean when she was a newly born hydrokinetic who can control water, by the way, but she can't control the hydrokinetic power powers properly because, like, obviously not. Like, if you if you gra if you were given a gun, are you gonna be magically able to shoot it a hundred percent? Probably, obviously not. You need to be you need to practice with the gun. Abilities are like that for elves, and she obviously didn't get any time to prepare before she panicked and made a, a flooded a part of Atlantis. However, this time she protected Atlantis from flooding by holding up this huge water. Well, and that's that's Lynn, by the way, the hydrokinetic. That's this girl, this girl, you know. And she holds up Atlantis, and this is like a kind of comeback for her because, oh, before when I was young and I was naive and I, I was still new to my power, I flooded Atlantis and created PTSD for me about Atlantis and water in general. However, now I've overcome all of these fears and become a better character and have grown to be a capable person to hold up that water in Atlantis and rather save it rather than be the one who is flooding it, which is really, really cool. And as for the twist within the book, which is the fact that number one, there are two Nightfalls. Number two, the Nightfall, the original Nightfall, at the very least, the original Nightfall for Vespera, that was her human experimentation. Now, some of it I kind of expected, because the thing is, it's kind of really weird that the elves, like, threw out all the humans because the humans did something bad. Yeah, sure. I have, a, I have this, like, feeling that, of course, humans are bound to do bad things, because... That's kind of what humans do. We're very cruel. We're a very evil side to us. However, it doesn't make sense that their entire species was taken out because a couple of humans did something bad, is what I'm saying. Because, for example, within the elven society, if a one elf does something bad, do we, like, kill the entire elf? Right? No, we capture that particular elf, mind wipe them, and put them into exile. <laughs> That's usually what happens. So... It doesn't make any sense to me, it didn't make any sense to me, that the elves would banish the entire humankind because a group of humans did something bad. However, now we know it was the opposite. And it was the elven kind who'd done something wrong. And we locked up the little one elf that did something bad, which was Vespera, and we kicked out the entire human race, which is really kind of weird. I, th I think, like, after after this book, and there's Legacy, I believe, and there's the next couple books are coming out. And in those next, next couple books, I think I can predict a couple things that's going to happen with the humans that I'm probably going to talk about in the next video, because next video is the next book, with the Keeper of Lost City series, and that's pretty much my analysis. And I believe it really comes together well. Like, and also, I really like that dynamic with... Um, Lady Gisela, where it's like, we're not sure if she's the good guy or if she's the bad guy. She keeps wording this in a way where it's like, I will help you. We are on the same side for now. So it, it kind of gives us that nice tension that really allows us to keep going, reading, and being really tense and not trusting Gisela, which is the point, I guess, and it's very, very well done. It's tr what I'm trying to say. And I would give this book probably around a 8 out of 10 or 7 out of 10, because the twist wasn't... It was a really good twist. It was like a 8 out of 10 twist. It was a very, 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 very good twist. 
However, it's not like a 10 out of 10 epic level twist like Severus Snape was under Dumbledore's command the whole time when he killed Dumbledore. Like, that's a 10 out of 10 extreme what in the heck is going on twist. And in fact, this series has done that before in some of the previous books. However, for this twist, I just felt like, yeah, it's good. But up to the Keeper of the Lost City series standards, it's 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 medium, it's mediocre, is what I kind of thought. But I, like I said, don't get me wrong, it is a very good twist. And overall, the book had good character development and really strong storyline, good plot and good flow. And this really nice tension kind of dynamic with the characters with Dex when they rejected, when Sophie rejected Dex. And with the Gisela and Keith and Sophie thing, where they contact Gisela and they can't really trust him, I think that's really well done. And that's why overall, I would say it's not picture perfect, like a 10 out of 10, what in the world, that is an awesome, epic book kind of thing. But it is still a very, very good book, which is why the 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10 rating that I'm putting out. And like always, your plot thrust are in the plot coaster. Have a great Valentine's Day. Good luck with your crush. And hopefully you do better than Dex. Or at the very least, you do as good at Dex as Dex. Because he got rejected, but he also got a kiss. So who's the real loser there? Anyways, have a great day. And subscribe if you can. And yeah, good luck with whatever on Valentine's Day. I don't know. I don't really do anything. I don't think I'm sad. Okay, well, goodbye. Have a good day.